Hey everybody, I'm Todd Clippinger and welcome to the American Craftsman Workshop. I am installing new sandpaper on my drum sander and I wanted to take the opportunity to share with you how I do that. Now what I've done is I've already wrapped the front drum so you can see what that looks like and I'm going to kind of do the instruction as I wrap the rear drum. Okay guys, before we start putting the sandpaper on the back drum, let's talk about the front drum real quick. I have it already installed. That way you can take a good look at it. Um, th this is three inch wide sandpaper and notice uh, the direction that it's laid on the drum is, is opposite of the direction that the, the drum wrap uh, Velcro part is laid onto the drum. So that keeps it from peeling off when you remove it. Basically, this is the way that it came from the factory. I installed it the same way that it, it was originally installed, which is with strapping tape holding the tail ends. Now you don't have to worry about the boards. Uh, as long as the boards are, are on the um, conveyor belt, they don't really hit the strapping tape. Strapping tape, three quarters of an inch wide on each side will actually clear the material that's going through on the belt. So uh, this doesn't diminish your capacity. When I remove the old sandpaper, I keep it, I keep one of the pieces to use as a template for the next one. I just, every couple times, I'll maybe just remove an eighth of an inch so that this doesn't keep growing. And it's worked very well. The drum wraps, my new wraps always work very well. So let's go ahead and get started. The Velcro back definitely has its advantages in helping get you started. The main key in installing this is to keep firm even pressure the whole time during installation. So once I get this started, and it's, it's nice because I can, I can easily reset it. You can back it up and reset it. And once you get it going, it's pretty good. So right now what I'm keeping, you can just keep manipulating it. Now, typically once I get one wrap on, the second row starts getting a little bit tighter and sometimes I have to go back after I've installed it all and tighten this one up a little bit. But we'll, you'll see how that works out once we get it done. And it doesn't hurt if there's just a hairline gap you, you could have an easy 16th and it wouldn't hurt anything as long as your sandpaper fits on the drum. Not a big deal. What's nice is obviously I can let go and I don't lose all my tension here. It's already set. And I'm just keeping firm even pressure. And you can see I work this back and forth a little bit. So I'm keeping that. I just keep manipulating it just slightly as needed. You can see this real easy. Now if you have problems, if you're having a problem, you can pull this all back off and start over. Now, that doesn't mean you can easily change grits. Actually, this is a 100 grit, this is a 150. I have other grits of sandpaper, but if I've been running these drums for a while, this sandpaper for a while, and I want to go to like, let's say an 80, 80 in the front and 120, I can't just peel this off, change it and expect that I can put this back on. Once this sandpaper has been used for a while, when I go to remove it, most likely the felt backing is going to come off of it. It's going to separate. So this is not like your random orbital sander with Velcro back where you can remove the grits and keep interchanging it till the sandpaper is worn out. Once you've run this sandpaper for a while, if you go to change grits, this most likely won't be able to be reinstalled. And I do find that 100 and 150, that's the way it came from the factory, is the best overall combination for my needs. The coarser the grit sandpaper you install on the sanding machine, the more resistance it also has against the boards, and it's more difficult uh, for the machine to sand it. It seems like, um, 60 grit's horrible. 60 grit, the boards won't hardly, the machine really fights 
uh, the 60 grit. So I don't like going that low at all. In fact, I really don't even care for the 80 grit. Okay, that's a perfect wrap. Now, this came out perfect and I used the previous piece as the template for this one, but it is pretty it is pretty full end to end. So I know when I when I take this off, I'll make note of that that this is full and then I'll probably when I use this one as a template, I'll maybe just take an eighth of an inch back off of it. Now, if I was having a problem with this sandpaper and I just didn't get it on quite right, you can just pull it off, back it out, and redo it. And actually, the fact that I'm sharing the, all this information as I'm doing it is slowing me down. It's, I would have been done and had the tape on by now. So it, it only takes a few minutes. Okay, so <clears throat> that's on. You know, when you when you have machines like this and you open it up, it's always good to, to go ahead and inspect all the other parts. Um, I'm about to do for uh, some greasing here. The belt looks good. I already kind of checked this stuff. And of course the, um, the machine is unplugged. Here's the power. The power is right here. It's already, it's unplugged, so I'm safe. I take really good care of my machines, guys. If you watched my previous video, I talked about air compressors and how I take care of my air compressors. Um, my machines last a long time because I do good maintenance on them. Now, when you install the tape, you don't want to get it too tight. If you, if you pull this tape really tight, actually it'll cause your, your, sandpaper to buckle and what I do is there's one revolution I get two full revolutions this is the direction that the sandpaper that the drums spin so I do two full revolutions and I cut it off now on this end on the left end the tape goes in the natural direction of the tail over here it's going to feel like you're going against the tail but the fact is I've done the tape the other way and don't do that. It 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 actually um, uh, you 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 want you want the tape to go in the way that it doesn't come off. I've actually by wrapping it with the same direction as this tail's going. It actually as the drum ran, the tape started to come up, and then it it, it caught on something, and then it it ripped it off. So that's the wrong direction. Even though it feels like the tape is going against the direction of the sandpaper, just put it on that way. So <clears throat> right here. Sometimes, here's what you want to check. I can tell, typically from the second, the second row here on over, it, it's very even. And sometimes this first row is not quite as even in pressure. And, it, and so what happens, if you go to sand something, it's going to cause the, the looseness to, it's going to cause a little buckle and a crease, and it'll shorten the life of your sandpaper. So what I do is, if it doesn't look like it's enough, I'll undo that, add a little bit of pressure, and rewrap it. As you can see, this is real easy. Okay, that, that actually does look better to me. And, and I can see the difference right in here. And actually what you want to see is, does this all lay evenly? All these edges, they lay real nice and even. You can have a little bit of a gap. That, that isn't going to hurt anything, especially because... The gap's at an angle, it's not in a straight line, so that's not gonna leave like an unsanded track line. Um, that, that's, why, that's what's nice about having the sandpaper at an angle. So, okay, so that looks good. Oh, right there. Actually, right there. This, see, this pucker's more right here. So that's what I wanna get rid of. Typically that first row, that first, this first row doesn't always set as tight. And that's okay. With the Velcro, you just come back to it. And that and it's not a problem. Okay, there we go. And I don't usually start where the tail is. I'm, 
roll the drum away from the tail. And don't pull this too tight. If you pull this too tight and you cinch it, it's going to buckle your sandpaper. Just all you're doing is holding the tail. So I try to just do it firm, just a firm installation of the tape, just like we did a firm, even installation on our sandpaper here. There's two wraps. I like two wraps. Now, when the drums spin this direction, that tail, it's not going against the direction of the, the tape, so it, it won't come off. So that's it. It's all looking real good. I can see you'll develop an eye if you get a, if you get one of these sanders and uh, you, when you spin the drum and you look across the the horizon of the drum here, I can see that it's even. You can tell when it's uneven. You'll see it. So I like the Velcro back. Some guys don't. I've used sanders with the Velcro back it, like I have and without. Some guys feel like when they sand their solid wood that uh, this is too spongy. I've never felt that it was spongy. I've done a lot of sanding. I got a lot of miles on my machine and I've had great results for years and years. I just replaced the Velcro wrap on the drum due to the fact that I had a misread the, get the depth gauge on my machine. So when I sent the board in, it was set too shallow. I blew up the sandpaper and immediately melted the Velcro. Now the Velcro, if you damage the Velcro drum wrap, if you wrap fresh sandpaper on it, and the Velcro is, is, say it's melted or burned up behind the sandpaper right here. Well, that's going to leave a weak spot and it's not going to have an even pressure on the sandpaper. So it won't sand properly. So, um, you know, that is one of the drawbacks of the Velcro, but it also has its advantages. Whether you like the Velcro or not really is going to be up to you. So that's something you would have to figure out. Well, guys, that's it for how I install sandpaper on my dual headed drum sander. If you're thinking about getting a drum sander, guys, I really recommend them if you have the space, the, it fits your budget. And also if, you, if you're a small pro shop like I am, a drum sander is a total game changer. And I'm, I'm just hoping that by giving you a look under the hood, either you haven't changed the sandpaper and you're gonna find the information helpful, or it gives you a peek before you buy a machine and just to understand what it's gonna be like. You know what? It doesn't matter if it's a Shop Fox, if it's a Grizzly, or if it's it's Powermatic, or um, any of the other brands. They're all very similar. I've I've had my hands on, uh, you know, four different uh, machines, and they're all real similar. So you can you can kind of get a sneak peek of what to expect when you're installing the sandpaper. So I hope that you found this video helpful. And until next time, guys, please be safe in your own shop.